He's an engineer at Zuber by day, but he's a meetup and conference organizer by night. Um, and he's going to talk to you about caching techniques for server-side rendering. Little applause for Robert Aritonov. Thank you, Dean, for your introduction. You saved my time since I have only six minutes. So uh, that's really great. So yeah, as you can see on my double side badge, unique double side badge, I'm uh, both the organizer and uh, speaker. I wasn't really pleased to do that in uh, one week with preparations of everything at once. So uh, uh, please bear with me if I'll have some hiccups during the slides. It was really hard and tense to prepare in my schedule. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, I want to tell uh, a bit of a story of how we've been approaching the advanced server-side rendering caching with React, uh, which findings we got, and uh, um, what you can uh, reuse from our experience. And uh, without further ado, let's just jump into details, as again, I have just like five, six minutes to not postpone everybody else. So to give you a bit more context, uh, Zuber is a travel website, mostly uh, aiming at the Dutch market. And it's a fairly high load uh, project with around three, four million visitors a month, uh, especially in high seasons and uh, around 350 requests per second on higher load. And that will be only growing uh, from now on because we're really ramping up everything right now in the product. And to give you again even more context about why server side rendering is super important for us in general and might be for you as well because uh, our project is not that unique in the way how we get visitors and so on is um, the fact that around 80% of traffic we get for the website is coming from Google. And you may ask that uh, if Google already uh, executes JavaScript, then what's the point of um, struggling with server-side rendering performance and things like that? But uh, considering the huge amount of traffic going from there, we can't afford any hiccups and we can't afford any uh, fall downs in the, um, in the responses uh, and um, queries from and the results from Google, Google. So because every position would just directly affect our revenue. So it's super important to give as much content to Google as possible. And of course, uh, React is really great with that. We're really thankful that React allows to write uh, isomorphic applications, which we do in our project as well. And um, the problem is that server side rendering, although it's, it's there and it's great, it's uh, quite long to execute on server and especially on uh, in container environment where we have uh, a lot of machines with uh, smaller CPUs. You can definitely feel that, and uh, I'll show you some numbers a bit later. Uh, it's still, of course, great that it's there, that uh, the possibility is there, because without it, uh, yeah, we won't be using most likely React because it just won't, won't uh, fit. But again, it's said that um, the community is not giving that much attention to it, therefore it's not that optimized yet. But the things are getting better, and um, again, more uh, details on it. So the first thing that you can think of uh, when you talk about optimizing the server uh, response times is probably caching. But of course, uh, of course, you first optimize your code so everybody, everything is working just more efficient and then caching because caching is uh, in general really hard to manage. Uh, but also with caching, even if you reach the point and you find your um, safe strategy to do caching, it's really hard to choose what exactly you would, would like to cache. So the most efficient could be uh, caching the whole page response. And at first sight, it might seem that you don't have any personalized data, you serve only public pages. But then if you look closer, you see that you have some A-B tests running, you have some uh, real sensitive data that should be updated more often. And if you'll fail, you can uh, have really bad is issues like Steam had um, some while ago with uh, showing other people pages to like other random strangers with some personal data and so on. So it's really easy to fail. Uh, the next thing that you probably will aim at when uh, you talk about caching would be uh, caching data, like uh, queries to database, which is a lot easier to manage and it's a lot more straightforward. But again, it won't solve a problem of uh, slow server-side rendering because even if the data will come fast and still React will take like up to uh, 200 milliseconds to render, you still lose a lot of time. So the most efficient approach uh, you can get with React is to uh, cache on component level. This gives a, bunch, a lot more flexibility of what exactly you want to cache, what, what you don't want to cache, and so on. And as I have just two minutes left, I will uh, try to uh, run a bit faster through the uh, solutions. So one of the biggest players with server-side rendering at scale is uh, Walmart, a really super, super popular project with uh, a really big high load. And they have a really interesting uh, open source project like Electrode, which is a common solution for developing React apps, but they also have like the uh, 
smaller modules that do specific things like electrode uh, react as caching. It allows you to, to do profiling to exactly determine what's wrong uh, and what's the slowest on your project. Uh, then it allows also to do uh, per component caching and some templating so we can uh, cache less but uh, use more optimized ways of uh, replacing the strings, not uh, calling the React uh, renderer uh, as much as possible. And uh, yeah, as I promised, here are some numbers, what you can achieve. So given that 200 milliseconds could be the initial average response time from the server, caching just data, you can achieve around 50 milliseconds. Uh, but rendering also the results of server-side rendering, you can go even to 15 milliseconds, which is, which is a lot uh, greater and, of course, will provide better user experience for your uh, clients. Uh, talking about code examples, it's quite easy to uh, configure the per-component caching. Basically, you can just define a list of components and the strategy of how they should be cached. And in our case, we are aiming at caching per route components, which again with React Router is real straightforward to match the things. And it could seem that, yeah, you just took the solution like this and you're all good, but it's not that easy because there are some catches. And um, the other project that I found really recently from Formidable, thanks a lot for, uh, for them, uh, for this project, is solving most of the uh, problems that, that are there with traditional server set rendering caching approaches for React. And what, how Rob Skillian is different uh, from Electro solution is that, um, first of all, it's asynchronous, which allows you to cache on remote servers, which is super great and allows you to have common cache for clusters. Um, it uh, yeah, supports the external servers and it also can do the streaming which was previously possible only with like uh, complete forks of React, but uh, with this you can just get it uh, almost for free and super easy to use. And again, as I don't have much time, I'll just show you some slides uh, which you can also will be able to get from internet. The ease uh, of use is just really great. Uh, you just uh, replace render to string function with uh, render from Rob Skillian and you can easily uh, synchronize uh, the uh, rendering. And the syntax is also a lot more nicer of, of how you define which components and how do you catch them with which strategy, just setting it uh, straight in JSX. And yeah, uh, asynchronous rendering opens all the possibilities to render for a cluster without keeping the state per application. And to wrap up, uh, the last thing I want to mention, the, the thing that we are building is still in beta. We're just now rolling out uh, to, to test it on real users. But uh, having those insights could be already useful and beneficial for you as well. So uh, if you're into those kind of things, uh, join us as, uh, at um, uh, our challenge. And as any other company in the Netherlands and the world, we're also hiring. And we also have a booth, so come by. I'll be there to answer more questions. And yeah, hope my, uh, our insights uh, were quite useful for you and you can reuse some of them as well. Thank you.